Hey everyone, Chris here from Real Ride Share Stories. And Dustin from Dustin is Driving. In today's video, guys, we're going to talk about the long controversial debut. Debut. <laughs> debut. 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 Now, you, you made it through controversial. But I know. I was focused so hard on that word. Hey everyone, Chris here from Real Ride Share Stories. And Dustin from Dustin is Driving. In today's video, guys, we're going to talk about the long controversial debate on whether drivers are really independent contractors or have we been misclassified from being employees. Because personally, in my opinion, well, all these restrictions and parameters we have to follow sure makes us feel like we're uh, actual employees because the only choice we really have is whether we're going to log on the app or not. What do you think? Oh, I'm right there with you. Um, that is pretty much the only freedom that we have and pretty much have had, but it was a lot better back in the day because pay was higher. There wasn't so many false reports or allegations uh, when it, you could just be deactivated left and right like they're doing today. So the atmosphere in the arena is a whole different ball game today than it was in yesteryear. Um, so there's been, I guess, a few tightenings of at least when it comes to the pocketbook and the pay, uh, where Uber and Lyft have tried to, you know, peel back how much they're paying drivers and try to collect more because you see the service charge that all of a sudden is now 40, 50, 60% of what the fare is. And Uber sits back and just connects people together for a ride and for payment. And they just sit back and collect upwards of 60 plus percent of that ride, which, you know, that doesn't seem as fair because it's not them who is going out and paying for the vehicles, the maintenance, the service, and everything that goes along with it. So as you look at it more and more, and if you really truly look at it, and I'm talking about like all the different facets and variants of what it is to be an independent contractor versus an employee, that gray area that they're operating in starts to clear up and I'm going to say it where I actually think that drivers are being misclassified as independent contractors and really should be classified as employees. And I've been, you know, I've made videos on that topic a little bit, uh, but I haven't really gone into detail too much, but I'm actually changing what I think about it because once you start looking at things and you really start paying attention, um, you know, I'm going into, into the side of employee more so than uh, what is going on when it comes to being an independent contractor. And the biggest reason why I say that is because of AB5 and what's going on there in California, how they're uh, having that ABC test, which we can uh, go over that in a little bit, but how they're changing uh, the ABC test and what they've done with Uber uh, to try to, you know, curtail being classified as an uh, independent contractor, or I'm sorry, being classified as an employee versus an independent contractor uh, in state of California when you are an Uber driver. And so a lot of the changes that they've made just shows the flexibility and the freedom that they should be operating under, but yet aren't when it comes to the rest of the country and even possibly the world. Oh, yes, I totally agree with you on that because what California now, uh, the AB5 is supposed to go into effect, what, January 1st, stating that they're supposed to be treated as actual employees now because they've gone back and forth in, in the court over and over debut, er, debating this. And now, instead of actually saying, okay, yeah, you are employees and everything because they don't want to, you know, they don't want to affect their bottom dollar. It's always about the money in the end. They don't want to pay our taxes. They don't want to give us sick pay, vacation days, all that good stuff, you know, as most employers have to pay into. So they're trying to save face and, you know, prolong it. And now they've changed it up where before drivers could not see who we were picking up, like where they wanted to go at all. Okay. Right now, we still don't know who we're picking up till we get there because people can put in whatever fake crazy name they want to put in there. Like your mom, or the devil, you know, Bob. <laughs> but Bob. <laughs> Silky Bob. But now Hi, Bob. they put in there <laughs> now they put in there actually uh 
for, for California people at least, they let them know exactly how much the estimated pay is be- beforehand and where they're going to be going. Mm-hmm. And the rest of the country now, um, unless you have a certain like what Uber Pro status, you don't get to see those extra features and everything. Um, or should I say, at least estimated how much the ride's going to be. Now we're just, you know, just picking it up. It's just all random. We don't have any clue at all. If we were actual independent contractors, we would, you know, technically be like taxis. Taxis, they have pretty much like a flat rate of what they're going to do. And they get paid a whole lot more than we do. And don't even have to do what the maintenance and everything on their vehicles because they're with a company. You know what I'm hmm. saying? Like we're, we're technically, we can say, oh, I, I, I drive for Uber and Lyft. But are you an employee of Uber and Lyft? Technically, no. Should you be? Probably. Oh, yeah, for sure. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the uh, ABC test on the screen right now, which is what California says. And then um, we'll do the IRS, what they say. And then also what France has done, uh, because I don't think we've talked about that, or I don't even know know if you know what happened in France recently. uh, No, I don't. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, so as you see on the screen, it's talking about the ABC test, uh, what it is. So these are the three things right here. And it says, uh, number one, the worker is free from the control and direction of the hiring entity in connection with the performance of the work, both under the contract for the performance of the work and in fact. Uh, so that's the first point. Then two is the worker performs work that is outside the usual course of the hiring entity's business. And Uber says we're not a technology or that we're not a transportation company, but we're a technology company. And that I can understand to a point, but they deal mostly in rideshare. Now they're doing delivery with Uber Connect and Uber Direct, depending on how that goes, plus also Uber Eats. So they're kind of expanding their horizons a little bit. But Lyft hasn't done anything. They're, you know, they've just started doing delivering of things because of this whole pandemic and their business is pretty much dried up uh, for a couple of weeks now. Um, so it's, it's pretty interesting there. And then the third point is uh, the worker is customarily engaged in an independently established trade occupation or business of the same nature as the work is performed. Um, so, and it says one important thing to remember when you read about employee versus independent contractors, the IRS states, uh, and the states assume that a worker is an employee unless proven otherwise. So yeah, I'm, oh, and, and, I, and that's pretty much what they, they kind of do too. You know what I'm saying? Like we are, we are ex- exactly what these what these three rules state. Pretty much shows exactly what we are. You know what I'm saying? Like Uber does. We're not free from control of them. They control everything about the aspect. All we do is follow a mm-hmm. GPS. That's it. We have no control. And anything else besides turning the app on and off. That's it. That's mm-hmm. it at all. And um, yeah. So like, you can't. We we don't control the pay. Like, there's nobody who can say, "Oh, I want to pay." But in California, they're testing a feature where you can set your own pay, and at least in that aspect, they're trying because that was pretty much like the last holdup when it came to what it is. Then trying to create your own business, uh, so to tr- create your own clientele business, you know, if you were an independent contractor, you'd be able to do that. And that means like people could request you or they could, um, you know, continue on with you if they wanted to take more Uber or Lyft rides down the road, uh, whether it be later that day, whether they want to rent you out for, you know, a, an hour, a couple hours, kind of like a, a uh, uh, limo driver or something along that lines or a uh, um, uh, what you call it for hire driver which is a little bit different than what an uber lyft driver is Um, then also you got to comply with all the rules that they have so they put the rules out there and there's no change like they'll change them when they want to to suit them but if you go against the rules you risk deactivation you risk uh, losing money, you risk all of these factors, but yet nothing is on them when it comes down to it. Exactly. And that's why a lot of drivers actually took it upon themselves and were like, as you were saying about the clientele and everything, they're like, okay, well, the only difference is that makes us not be able to pick up passengers on our own is having commercial insurance. So drivers mm-hmm. are like, well, you know what? I'm an independent contractor. 
I might as well just go get my own commercial insurance. And then I can, you know, depending on whatever, what other permits or anything else you need, they can start picking up passengers on their own. Mm -hmm. And that's what they have been doing. I know a lot of places, especially in California, they have that, what, the favorite my driver now. They're trying to help that so drivers can actually, in a way, make their own clientele. There's other apps out there like um, that people have tried, that have tried like Apex and stuff like that to try to make an alternate actual um, clientele base to go off that list to be able to get up, you know, connect drivers with riders that they like the most. Mm -hmm. So drivers now, since we're not employees with everything going on with tr people trying to collect unemployment, everything's just, you know, the crap is, it's hit the fan. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's everywhere and no one knows anything. People are getting denied left and right and they're all freaking out saying, oh, oh, what's going on here? When, you know, the president said that we were supposed to gig workers and everything are supposed to be included yet it doesn't seem like anything like that's going down right now. Yeah. Now, are you familiar with the uh, website Fiverr? Oh, uh, no. Okay. Well, what Fiverr is, is like a, uh, um, it's like a freelancer website where, you know, you can look for a lot of different things like for people to build websites, for people to get me like make music, uh, you know, like YouTube channel art, things like that. Um, so it's a site where you can go on and you can look through all the different uh, people in the category you're looking at and work deals out with them. And they, as a freelancer, are able to, you know, put the pricing up there. They have sometimes different tiers that you can, um, you know, kind of negotiate with and things like that. Uh, and then Fiverr takes a small percentage off of that transaction if you proceed to have work done with them, um, which, you know, why couldn't Uber or Lyft set something up like that where if you wanted to pick a driver, then you can put on that you're online in a particular zone or area or something, even though maybe you may be sitting at home waiting for something to come in, you can kind of schedule your own rides or something at a particular time and say, oh yeah, I'll be out at this time, um, at least to kind of create more of a clientele business and you know also get rented off for you know maybe a day or a couple hours or something maybe um, somebody wants to uh, take you or to use you as a driver so they can take a date and go to a restaurant and then go out to you know go dancing or a club or something or whatever it might be and they might request you for the entire time when that would help drum up business and then you know they could pay you that way uh so i don't know maybe that's something that they could put into their mix uh where then at least that way you can negotiate your own pricing it can all be done through the app or something like that yeah that would be nice because i'm sure a lot of drivers out there especially right now could use that extra money and with with uber well, it's best probably with Lyft too. I mean, they don't want they don't want to do something like that at the same time because they want to keep taking their cut of the money. Like right now, drivers most of the time they're taking 50, 60 percent. When almost everybody back in the day signed up, they were only getting like 20 percent of our fares. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying 2025. 20, and then they all of a sudden went ahead and changed it to this flat rate and everything. Made you sign a contract or agreement. You had no. You had two choices. You could sign it and agree to whatever their terms are, or don't. That was, that was it. But you could no longer drive if you chose not to agree to their terms. So yeah. in, in a way, that's kind of like seeming like more of an employer, like pushing saying, hey, well, you know, if you don't work this overtime or something, you're not going you're, you're, you're to get your, your 40 hours anymore. We're going to drop you down to like part time. Mm. And that just, that just limits your options to be able to do anything. And drivers right now are, are really hurting for money and stuff like that would be nice. And like I said, that's also why this classification is really screwing everything up for the simple fact of people trying to collect unemployment in this time because something like this has is like never happened, at least in our lifetimes, where mm -hmm. unemployment's at the highest it's ever been. Um, everything people, shut down. Everything's shut down. You know, pre pre pretty much people are in like survival mode. And mm -hmm. Uber and Lyft aren't, aren't helping anything out at all, at all whatsoever. And it's it's... I think that can be another video that we can we can discuss about how 
Uber and Lyft's response is when it comes to this whole pandemic and everything there. Because that, that is a whole different subject itself that we can really talk about too. Um, Cause I have some good thoughts about that one. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That is true. Uh, but, but first, yeah, right now, if, like you said, I mean, I think we are pretty much, I used to be like you and we used to all be on the, we're, we're independent contractor side, but the mm -hmm. more and more, the longer you actually drive for them and everything, the more you realize you have no control over anything. And that that's part of the ABC test. That that's one of the things yeah. you, but you have well, no control. Let's talk about the algorithm. The algorithm <laughs> for Uber and Lyft. Oh, you mean how much it sucks? <laughs> <laughs> well, some of the things that they do within the algorithm itself, like they'll um, reward drivers who just hit the accept button. And if you don't want to, you know, drive in a particular area or you don't want to pick up a ride that's 25 minutes away. And what I said at the beginning part wasn't driver discrimination, what I'm saying, or destination discrimination. I'm just saying sometimes you don't want to be in a particular area because, you know, maybe that's not where the rides are coming and maybe it's busier in the downtown area versus in the, in the suburbs. Uh, and then it can be vice versa, depending on what and, may be going on. And it can on. be one of your hot spots. Why would you want to drive 25 minutes away from your hot spot to get a ride that's probably going to take you even further away? It's, it's just not worth it. Sometimes you'll, exactly. you, you end up feeling like you're paying money really than making money. Exactly. And so how they, they peg you in the algorithm. So if you deny or cancel on rides, it puts you down the list. And then you could be put in the timeout where – you know, you could be getting ping requests and then all of a sudden it's like, wait, why am I not getting any ping requests? And I'm not really making that much of money. And yet there's still things that are it's so showing surge or uh, personal power zone. Well, the personal power zone is weird in itself, but uh, when it used to be prime time pricing, um, or at least now where it shows like, oh, this is a busy area. Why don't you go here uh, instead of just putting some surge or something at that point? Um, so that's one, one thing too. Uh, then also the whole thing with surge, like there's a lot of people who chase surge and they really shouldn't be, but that's to control not only the supply and demand, but control how many drivers are here or there and what areas they're actually in. So there's that aspect of it when they do the algorithm. Then also, um, like I had said, the, the, the timeout issue, but also, um, if you have a lower rating, so if you're a driver who has a lower rating versus a higher rating, you're going to get shittier rides and you're going to have lower rated passengers and you're going to have, you know, less rides coming in than if you are a higher rated driver, which means if you have, you know, like a 4.9, 4.95, 4.98, 4 or even a 5.0 star rating, you're going to have a much better time, a much better chance at getting rides as well as getting better rides um, because of the whole algorithm. And the algorithm is what's in control. But they also can control the algorithm and put those barricades in it or those options in it to, to penalize drivers who aren't accepting rides, who are canceling on rides, and also who have a low star rating. Oh, yeah. And, and it's talking about canceling rides. If you're an independent contractor, they shouldn't be able to get deactivated for canceling too many rides. You know oh, what I'm saying? That's, yeah, that's same the thing. Problem. I mean, for canceling rides or for denying rides, if you see something on a ping request that comes in and it says 22 minutes away and it's far away, like it's going the opposite way of where you want to be, like say it's, it's a hot zone going on, maybe an event is just getting out and you're kind of heading that way because you know that it's going to be busier and you can kind of plan your, your evening day, whatever it is accordingly uh, to make the most amount of money. And it's up to this algorithm that says, Oh, you, you're not accepting rides. We're not going to give you as many rides or, Oh, you're canceling rides. You're, you're not gonna. And then it's, it's just, just this weird interaction the thing is, a lot of drivers just don't think about it. They're just like, oh, a ping request comes in. Uh, some will be like, oh, I got to take it because my Uber Pro status, I need to get Uber Diamond. And what do they Uber really platinum. give me at those points? Yeah, Uber Platinum, you know, whatever it is. It's like, it's, it's just a facade for drivers to continue to accept rides 
because if you fall below a threshold, which is that, I think it's, what is it, 80% or something, then you don't get your Uber Pro status, which what? Saves me what? 10 cents at a, at a, a uh, gallon or something when I can just download the GetUpside gas app and save even more than that using GetUpside versus um, Uber's crappy service, Uber Pro, or even like, uh, um, you know, saving on car maintenance repairs. It's like, I'm not going to use your crap anyways. So, but yet drivers are like, oh, I need to know. I need to know that. And yet you look at California who put in that ABC test and yeah, now they show exactly where the pickup is, where the drop off is. So you can make the decision. Well, they're going in a particular area that is away from the hotspot. And I don't want to go and drive into that area. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying the uh, destination discrimination. I'm saying what is best for you to make the most amount of money. You shouldn't be penalized for that. Now, I'm not saying like, oh, I don't want to go into a bad neighborhood. Like dropping somebody off in a bad neighborhood is not that really happens. a big deal. Like yeah, that, just, if you don't want to pick people up in that bad neighborhood because you feel unsafe or something, that's a different, that's a whole different thing. So that's not uh, like the whole thing with destination discrimination. It's like, just turn the app off, drive out of that area and turn it back on. It's fine. Um, because you got to go where the money is. And so, the, yeah, they show you the drop off in the pickup, or I'm sorry, the pickup and the drop off. They show you the estimated earnings of it. They show you how far away it is. They show you like the surge. They give you the ability in certain places to actually um, create your own pay versus what it actually says. So if it says, hey, I want to be, you know, instead of the, the rate that Uber or Lyft is giving, um, you know, I think that this ride, I want to drive for one and a half times, they can do that. So they really uh, get, loosened the restrictions that drivers have when it came to that. Oh, then they also got rid of the um, acceptance rate. So like you have Uber Pro no matter what, and they got rid of that acceptance rate issue. Uh, there is no issue with acceptance rate. I guess there is still issue with cancellation rates, um, but not as much. Or it, you and you can't get deactivated from it, from what I'm from what I understand or what I've heard. Um, now I haven't been in California really to to f know all that, but I, you know, we talk to drivers in pretty much all different areas. Uh, so I mean, yeah, it's 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 amazing what they did to try to curtail that law. Yet they still don't make any changes when it comes to the rest of the country. So. It, it really shows you that they are operating at such a far level that I'm pretty sure that if, if more courts challenge them, they may uh, be classified as employees over, over independent contractors. Oh yeah. I totally, I totally agree with you. And I think it, it's almost like they know that they're doing wrong now. And that's where they're like, okay, well, since this one state's fighting for, being unemployment, you know, independent contractors and everything, they want to actually be employees. Well, let's go ahead and try to please them so that way other states don't follow suit. And mm -hmm. what eventually might happen is that. Yeah. But let me hear, what do, you, what do you think it might end up in the end? Because I, I got to hurry up. My, uh, my kid's music teacher just called me. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Um, I think that more and more states are going to challenge Uber and Lyft because of what California did. Also, I'll show you real quick what France did. So uh, sharing the screen right now, uh, this was actually about a month and a half ago when this actually happened. So um, I was going to make a video on it, then everything happened with this whole pandemic. So it kind of got pushed to the, uh, to the side, but uh, top French court uh, deals blow to Uber by giving driver, driver employee status. So uh, a France court actually is finding that an Uber driver isn't really considered an independent contractor or what they deem is an independent contractor, but really considered an employee. Um, so I'm just going to kind of scroll through. Um, if you want to check out this article, it's by Reuters. Uh, I'll, leave, or I'll put a link in the description below uh, so you can check that out. But uh, I'm not really going to go over what it is. But yeah, that's just showing you that um, France is now giving a blow by giving driver employee status versus not. And which so might I, end up being the same thing here too. That's mm -hmm. what I honestly think after everything's said and done, 
Who now, knows how I, everything's going to turn out in the end? Yeah, in Jersey, uh, where you're, you're a, a state now. Not, I don't know if you'd say that's home state, but at least your base now uh, is put in a fine to Uber for, what, $650 million or something real yeah, close to it that? It's insane. In, in back uh, in uh, unemployment and um, employment tax, uh, things that they haven't paid, plus um, all of the interest and all that occurred, <laughs> accrued over the time. Uh, so you're, you're having states now put that money in. And then also New York is pretty much putting in the same type of legislation as um, California is trying to do. Uh, and so you're, you're seeing this happen more and more. So it's like, like I said, if, if you compare what's going on in California versus the rest of the country, it really shows that what they've changed there could go to the rest of the country. They don't have to test market like they're saying that they're testing, but really they should be doing that because otherwise you're going to have these challenges come into place and you're going to have to change the system anyway. I totally agree with you. All right. So wrapping up then your final thoughts on this, uh, what do you, do you think that drivers are truly independent contractors? Do you think that they could ever be truly independent contractors? They're operating in this gray area, or do you actually think that drivers are being misclassified uh, instead of being independent contractors and should be uh, actually classified as employees? What's your thoughts? Um, no, I, I think they are misclassified. The way everything is and how we, we're pretty much under their power it's almost like the matrix. They have all the control. We think we're independent contractors, but you're really not. Mm -hmm. That's where I feel. Yeah. And uh, you know, like I said, I'm right there with you. I I've, I've made videos saying, Hey, we're independent contractors. Stop trying to, to, to fight that. I've also voiced my opposition against the AB five and AB five like legislation. And I'm still not really sold on it because of uh, I don't think it's in the best interest of drivers to have AB5 or be an employee. I think it's in a driver's best interest to maybe choose what they want, but also to have more freedom to be able to make the best decisions to get the money that they want versus having this facade called Uber Pro or Lyft Rewards uh, that encourages drivers to do what they want, even though they're kind of giving you some sort of like, thing in return which let's face it how many people are actually using that crap anyways <laughs> true, <laughs> so, true. Uh, that's my my final thoughts on that any last last input or anything on that dustin no no i'm good that pretty much sums it up right there <laughs> <laughs> all right well uh i guess i'll end it then if that's cool or if you want to end it yeah go ahead all right. Um, well, that's the end of this video. Comment below your thoughts on this. What do you think? Do you think that drivers are independent contractors? Do you think that Uber and Lyft are operating in this crazy gray area? Or do you think that drivers have been misclassified and should be actually employees? Comment below, let me know. Also, what are your thoughts on all of that and just what they should be doing in general besides that? Comment below, let us know. Um, with that being said, that's the end of the video. Make sure you subscribe, ring the bell for notifications so you'll be notified every time a new video is uploaded. And as always, never drink and drive. Always tip your drivers, your delivery drivers, and your shoppers. And we'll see you next time. Time. Hey, everyone. Chris here from Real Ride Share Stories. Oh, I was, I was telling you to check, check the time before we started. Oh. <laughs> Hey everyone, Chris here from Real Rideshare Stories. And Dustin from Dustin is Driving. What's going on? So today we're gonna to be talking about a subject that we've kind of been considering, or no, fuck. Well, you know, they are part of the US, but they have a really strict set of rules in those two states. And I know that drivers have, <sighs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> ah. False reports can deactivate drivers, which suck. Um, you know, hold on. You're not going to just sit there and tell me I'm deactivated when they have a bunch of reports, which most of them are false. But if they're true, obviously, driver needs to be deactivated. But if you have enough people complain, that shouldn't affect. Um, oh, I fucking lost it there. I shouldn't even. I shouldn't even have talked about that shit.
Hey everyone, Chris here from Real Ride Share Stories. And Dustin from Dustin is Driving. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the long controversial, did I say that right? Contro controversial. <laughs> Do it. Hey everyone, Chris here from Real Ride Share Stories. And Dustin from Dustin is Driving. In today's video, guys, we're gonna talk about the long controversial deb deb <laughs> <laughs> debate. Okay, okay. <laughs> Hey everyone, Chris here from Real Ride Share Stories. And Dustin from Dustin is Driving. In today's video, guys, we're gonna talk about the long controversial... Just... <laughs> hey everyone, Chris here from Real Ride Share Stories. And Dustin from Dustin is Driving. In today's video, guys, we're gonna talk about the long controversial debut. Debut. <laughs> debut. 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 You, you made it through controversial. But I know! I was focused so hard on that word. <laughs> Hey everyone, Chris here from Real Ride Share Stories. And Dustin from Dustin is Driving. In today's video, guys, we're gonna talk about the long controversial de <laughs> debate. Debate, not debut. We're not debuting the controversial. Okay, all right. <laughs>